Have I given anything well, today? Have I helped some lonely pilgrim on my way? Just to know that my best, let me go home and take my rest. Yeah, let my name, my name, my name be with the blessed today. Have I given anything, Lord, today? Some needy soul on life's way. Oh, from the dark oh, to set in sun, I will live anyone. I said, I weep, I weep, I weep for what I've done today. Oh, today. Oh, today. Oh, today. Oh, today. Have I helped some oh, weary soul? Okay. 
bowed, Lord, and our hearts continue to be humble. Thanking you, Lord, always for your many, many rich blessings. We always take it as a privilege, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We want to worship you in spirit and, and in truth, dear Father, because we know that you deserve all that we can give you. We can't give you enough. Whatever we give you, dear Lord, we know it's not enough. We thank you for your love for us, dear Father, in sending your, your only son, your only begotten son of yours to die on that cruel cross of Calvary for our sin and give us a chance for everlasting life. We thank you for that great sacrifice, dear Lord, that you did of your son. We thank you, dear Lord, for his sacrifice, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us to have everlasting life, eternal life. Lord, we are so thankful for what you do for us. We thank you, dear Lord, for this day, your day, the Lord's day, one which we have not seen before, but you saw fit to keep us over here on time side of life to see this day and enjoy it in all the fullness that are that's in it. We are thankful that part of that fullness, dear Lord, most that fullness that we are enjoying is uh, worshiping you. Because Lord, we know what you brought us through and we understand how much you love us by continuing to meet us at the point of our needs. Lord, we've been going through some storms here lately with the uh, COVID-19 virus, the ice storm, which causes uh, sickness and, and causes financial woes, dear Father. But through it all, you are seeing us through it. We know you love us, Father, because even in the storm, we see your handiwork. We see how you look after your children. It increases our faith and it builds our trust continuously in you. Father, also, we are thankful that man has set aside this day also for the mothers. Father, we are thankful that you gave us our wives and our mothers. Heavenly Father, that is truly a blessing. We know how Proverbs 31 talks about that phenomenal woman, dear Father. And, and we have, in the church, we have experienced a lot of that goodness that you provide for us through our wives and through our mothers. Lord, we just want to thank you for all the mothers, not only in the church, but throughout the land. What a blessing, dear Father. We just love each and every one of our mothers. Thank you, Father. 
Father, also, we are so thankful again to you. We see, Heavenly Father, that we have challenges in our congregation right now with our building going through uh, the ice storm and being uh, damaged. But through it all, the Father, we are watching your handiwork again. And we see your hand, dear Lord, as we uh, in the process right now are restoring our building. We had many challenges, but through the, the discerning of your what you're doing for us, Lord, we see that we have nothing, nothing at all to worry about. You've shown over and over and over again, dear Father, that whatever challenge that we have, we do all we can. And we know, Lord, what we can't do, you will do. We see that right now with our building. And we are thankful, Father. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the spirit your spirit. And we know, Lord, that uh, through this ice storm and through this crisis we're having with our building, we thank you for the congregation who could spill out a lot of negative about what's going on with the building. But Lord, we have experienced nothing but good for our, from our members in the congregation. And we know, dear Lord, that it's not that they're so good, that it's you. They're listening to your word and they're obeying your word and being faithful, dear Lord, because we just experience all the good things they're saying to us to encourage us to keep doing what we're doing. And that is encouraging. And we thank each and every member for it. We thank them, dear Lord, for being faithful through all of this. They could stop worshiping. They could stop giving. They could stop loving. But through it all, dear Lord, uh, we are growing closer together. And we know, again, that's a product of your love and your word, dear Father. We can't thank you enough. Heavenly Father, again, we want to thank you for giving us whom we think is one of the best uh, ministers in the brotherhood. I know, dear Lord, we sound a little selfish, but uh, we believe that. He always teach your word, and we're asking that uh, right now, dear Lord, that you give him a ready recollection of the things he prepared, uh, that you prepared through him to give us a word on this day. God is tongue, God is thoughts, dear Lord, that he would deliver what you would have us that to know on this day. Thank you, dear Father, for our brother William and his family. Continue to bless and give him a long life. Lord, we thank you for our leadership. Lord, we can say uh, truthfully and honestly that there's not a mean spirit brother in our uh, brother in our leadership. And Lord, again, we are, that's a product of your love and your word that we study and we we, we put it into practices. We get along, dear Lord, because we love each other. We get along, dear Lord, because we love you and love your word, your spirit, dear Lord, and it abides in us. So thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for our congregation also. So Lord, we're just blessed. And we just pray, Lord, now as uh, we go through the further of this service that you will bless it they will be pleasing and acceptable to you. In Christ's name we pray and ask. Amen. When I should feel so sad, why does my heart feel so glad? Why does my soul feel so happy?
each day. I'm clinging to Him, I'm clinging to Him, and never to stray, and never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long. I'm going that way, I'm going that way. The glorious news I tell and sing as onward I go, as onward I go. Those who are still astray in sin, my Savior may know, my Savior may know. I want them to sing His praise above. Some beautiful day, some beautiful day, for glory to Him who died for me. I'm going that way, I'm going that way, I'm going that way, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. The Savior I adore is with me each day, is with me each day. I'm clinging to Him, I'm clinging to Him, and never to stray, and never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long. I'm going that way, I'm going that way. I know I shall meet Him at the gate when trials are past. Shall meet him face to face in glory at last, in glory at last, and know I believe that when we meet, well done he will say, well done he will say, for trusting his soul, redeeming love, I'm going that way, I'm going that way, I'm going that way, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. The Savior I adore is with me each day, is with me each day. I'm clinging to Him, I'm clinging to Him, and never to stray, and never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long. I'm going that way, I'm going that way, I'm going that way, I'm going. The Savior I adore is with me each day, is with me each day. I'm clinging to Him, I'm clinging to Him, and never to stray, and never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long. I'm going that way, I'm going that way, I'm going that way, I'm going. The Savior I adore is with me each day, is with me each day. I'm clinging to Him, I'm clinging to Him, and never to stray, and never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long. I'm going that way, I'm going. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to say thank you for tuning in to this television broadcast again on this Lord's Day morning. And we trust and pray that you have already had a wonderful Lord's Day. And we look forward to spending the time with you this morning that we're going to have. And we trust that what we have to say this morning will be a blessing to you. Again, I want to say to all of those who are members of the Church of Christ at Eastside, it's always a delight to be able to talk with you and to share God's word with you. And to all of those who are visiting, we want you to know that you are indeed our honored guests. And we thank you for tuning in because we know that you have options and you could choose to tune in to anyone except for us. And so we appreciate the fact that you've chosen to tune in and support our efforts to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the world. I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. We know that first and foremost, this is the Lord's Day. But we're also thankful that the world has seen fit 
to set aside a special day just to honor our mothers, because certainly you are worthy of honor. And I want to encourage all of the husbands to do something nice for the wives today. You might say, well, my wife is not my mother, but she is the mother of your children. And so we pray that you will be kind enough and gracious enough and loving enough to do something nice for your spouse, the mother of your children, and that the children would do something to make this day extra special for mom. And understand that if you could do it one day, you could do it every day. And so we encourage you to do something special for the mothers today and for the wives today. And all of those mother figures, we want you to know that we love you and we sincerely appreciate you for all that you've done and for all that you do every day. Also, I want to encourage you to please stay tuned. After this worship service has ended, we will have a special program for our mothers and it will be on YouTube as well. So please stay tuned. You've gotten information from us uh, relative to this. And so I trust and pray that you would please uh, stay tuned and see what we have prepared for our mothers. Also, we want to let the church know that uh, this week you will be receiving some information from us, from the leadership of the Church of Christ at East Side, to let you know what our plans are pertaining to where we are going to worship until our facilities have been repaired. As I have stated to you, uh, it's probably going to be near the end of this year before the work is completed. So we want to encourage you to continue to pray for that work and that we might be able to successfully complete that work. And also uh, the groundbreaking for the education center has already begun and that work is ongoing as well. And so we do have a plan for us to get together. We will give you that information, detailed information, exactly when and where, where we're going to be worshiping. And uh, you'll be getting that from us on this week. This week, look for it from the leadership of the Church of Christ at Eastside, informing you of where we are going to worship the Lord until our facilities are repaired. Now, I want to encourage you to get your Bibles and we're going to look at a passage this morning as we talk to our mothers. I thought about this passage and I thought it would be a fitting passage for today's message. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. The Bible reads, Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. This morning, I want to use as our subject of address, 
the cry of a mother's heart. The cry of a mother's heart. I think all of us can agree that there is something special about a mother's love. There is something special about mothers. They are cut from a different cloth. Mothers are special because God chose them to be the bearers of life. God chose them to be the givers of life and God chose them to be the sustainers of life. We know ultimately our life comes from God, but we are talking about in the physical sense that God used the woman to bring life into this world and to sustain life. And so mothers are especially different and unique. God has created them in a very unique way. Sometimes I, I like to watch shows about wildlife. I'm always intrigued about wildlife. And it always amazes me to see the lengths to which mothers, even in the animal kingdom, will go to protect and to defend their young. Motherhood is instinctive. It is innate. It is something that is God-given. I like to think of mothers as God giving a small piece of himself to the world in living color. That's the way I like to see our mothers, as a little piece of God in living color in this world. So we are able to see the heart that God would have and a mother's love is a reflection of the love of God. Now, I know not to the degree that obviously God loves us, but I'm talking about perspectively when we think about mothers and what they do, that that is indicative and their hearts and work are indicative of what God is like. And so we thank God for our mothers. Now, obviously, I know that there are exceptions to the rule. I realize that there are some poor examples of mothers who are anything but a representation of God's heart and God's love in this world. But generally speaking, they are the exception and not the rule. Mothers are unique. They are special. And one of the things that makes a mother unique is indeed their love. Someone said mothers are the people who know us best and love us the most. A mother is your first friend, your best friend, and your forever friend. I, I, I stated earlier that a mother is like a small piece of God in living color in this world. And someone may say, well, well, how in the world could you say that? I can say that because God himself says that there are certain attributes and characteristics about a mother that are compatible to him. In other words, God says concerning himself, there are certain attributes of his character that are compatible to a mother's love and care for her children. God specifically states this in Isaiah chapter 66 and verse number 13. In Isaiah chapter 66 and verse number 13, and I trust that you will follow along in your Bible. I'm not going to be sharing my screen with you this morning. Uh, I just want you to follow along in the word of God with me. Uh, Isaiah chapter 66 and verse number 13 simply says, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. 
in that context, in Isaiah chapter 66, God compares his love for his children to that of a mother's love for her children. In other words, there is something about motherhood that serves as an image of the divine. God calls it motherly comfort. Mothers, you are the hands of God. You are the heart of God in the home. You correct when needed. You comfort when needed. And you sacrifice when needed. Mothers, through you, God's love, God's compassion, God's comfort, God's consoling nature are constantly on display. So mothers, we thank God for you on this day, but not just this day, but we thank God for you every day of the week because in you, we can see a touch of God himself. And as I thought about mothers and their love for their children and the lengths to which they go to care for their children, I could not help but think about this Gentile woman in Matthew chapter 15, who overcame obstacle after obstacle in order to get help for her demon-possessed daughter. I want us to look at this text on this morning in Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 21. Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 21. Again, look at what it says. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Now, to appreciate the significance of this statement, you need to know that what transpired in the earlier part of this chapter. In verses one through nine, Jesus had been embroiled in a theological debate with his number one nemesis, the Pharisees and the scribes. And they were debating about ceremonial washings and spiritual defilement. Jesus said, true defilement does not come from the filth on your hands. It comes from the filth in your heart. Jesus said, it is not about ceremonially cleansing your hands before a meal that matters. It's about cleansing your heart in every aspect of your life. In other words, God is more concerned about you having a clean heart than he is about you having clean hands. Eating with unwashed hands may make you sick physically, but listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, living with an unclean heart will cause you not only to mess up your health, but it will cause you to mess up your destiny. It will cause you to miss heaven itself. And during this conflict and his conflict with the Pharisees and the scribes, Jesus didn't pull any punches. He called them hypocrites and, and vain worshipers who cared more about their human traditions than they cared about the word of God. And so Jesus had to put them in their place and he had no problem putting them in their place. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15, verses seven through nine, Matthew chapter 15, verses seven through nine, he says, hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching us doctrines, the commandments, of men. After this skirmish with the Pharisees and scribes, Jesus wanted to get away from the daily grind of ministry. He wanted to get away from the mess and the messy religious leaders that he had to deal with and contend with on a day in and day out basis. So the Bible tells us in the text that we read in Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 21, the Bible says that Jesus departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Tyre and Sidon were Gentile cities 
Tyre was approximately 35 miles northwest of Galilee. And Sidon was approximately 60 miles northwest of Galilee. And when we look at Mark's account of this same incident that we're reading about in Matthew chapter 15, Mark tells us in Mark chapter 7 and verse number 24, the following words. From there, he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and wanted no one to know it, but he could not be hidden. Now, Matthew does not give us that bit of information. Matthew does not tell us about his entering into a house with the hope that he could be incognito. Mark tells us that Jesus wanted to get away and Jesus wanted to be in stealth. He did not want anyone to know that he had come to town. Church, listen to me. Jesus just wanted to get away. Jesus said, I just need some rest. I need some time to refresh myself from the daily demands of ministry. Brothers and sisters, sometimes life can and will close in on us. Sometimes the constant demands of our daily responsibilities on the job and even in the home can take its toll on us and drain us emotionally and physically. And Jesus, the son of God, Jesus, God in the flesh, shows us that that's normal, that it's normal to be sometimes emotionally depleted, that it's normal sometimes to be physically depleted. And sometimes we need to just get away. Sometimes we need a break. Sometimes we need to just get away so that we can have some aura and aura, some rest and relaxation. And on a very practical level, let me just talk to you on a very practical level. Mothers, listen to me. Sometimes you need to take a break from the daily grind of housework and caring for kids and cooking and cleaning and washing and doing all of the chores that mothers often do. Sometimes you need to break away from the high demands of the job. If you work outside of the home, and sometimes many of our mothers do work outside of the home and then come home and deal with home. If you work outside of the home, sometimes you need to get away from the demands of the job and get away for some a long time. You need some time with the Lord and sometimes you just need to get away and be with your friends and, and sometimes you need to get away and just be with your spouse. In other words, you can get away and you don't have to feel guilty about it. You don't have to feel like you're not living up to your responsibilities because all of a sudden you say, well, I'm depleted emotionally. I'm depleted physically. I ought to be better than this. Listen, Jesus shows us that it's human to be emotionally depleted and physically depleted and needing some rest and relaxation. Sometimes we need to just get away. And Jesus demonstrated to us that it's normal and it's just being human. Brothers, listen to me carefully. If you have small children at home, every now and then you need to hire a trustworthy babysitter, somebody that's responsible, somebody that you know you can depend upon, somebody that you can trust your children with. Now, if you have relatives in town, that's another option. If you have grandparents, that's another option. I'm just trying to say that you need to sometimes find someone that you feel comfortable leaving your children with and take your wife out on a night on the town, for a night on the town. Spoil her, pamper her. Let her know that she's appreciated for all that she does. And brothers, listen to me. Even if your wife is a stay-at-home, stay-at-home mother, pitch in and help. Pitch in and help. Help her with the children. 
Don't let her struggle with the children. And you sit there and watch the television, watch your sports, and, and she's struggling with the children. And then you want to rush her to do something else. I'm just trying to say, have a sensitive heart. Be concerned. Have a heart of compassion and a heart of consideration. Help her with the children. Help her with the housework. Don't let her work outside of the home and, and then have to come home and work in the home. Help her at home. If she's helping you outside, then help her inside. And spend some quality time with your wife because after dealing with children all day long, all day long, she needs adult conversation. Brothers and sisters, just because we are Christians does not mean that we are not human. We don't cease to be human simply because we are Christians. We are still human and we still have emotional and physical needs. That's why so many marriages get in trouble and temptations creep into that marriage because those who are in the marriage often neglect one another and they make that other person that's being neglected vulnerable. I'm not trying to say it's right. I'm just trying to tell you what happens, what is. And so I'm just saying that you need to pay attention. You need to be concerned about your wife and what she's going through as a mother. And she deals with all of the issues that come her direction as a mother. Jesus needed to leave the area for a moment to just find a respite. The point is that sometimes all of us need a respite. We need some quiet time by ourselves, some me time. And, and sometimes you need some you and me time. In other words, I just need to be with my spouse. That's an unavoidable reality. But Mark tells us, it is gospel, that even though Jesus was trying to get away from home, and go deep enough into Gentile territory to slip into town incognito that his presence was still discovered. Mark chapter seven and verse number 24, listen to it again. The Bible says, from there he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and wanted no one to know it, but he could not be hidden. Even in Gentile country, Jesus' fame and renown were ubiquitous. In other words, even in deep Gentile territory, Jesus was well known. The word about Jesus had spread all over the region. And even there, that woman found Jesus. Notice what the Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 22. Matthew chapter 15. And verse number 22, the Bible says, and behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon possessed. Now Mark tells us in Mark 7 and verse number 24 that she was a Syrophoenician woman by birth. And Matthew tells us that she was a Canaanite woman or a Canaanite by descent. In other words, she was a Canaanite born in Phoenicia, which belonged to Syria under Roman rule. And since she was a Canaanite woman, since she was of Canaanite descent, according to Genesis chapter 10 and verse number six, the Canaanites were descendants of Ham and the Hamitic descendants settled in that region that we know as Africa. So it appears that this woman was of African descent. And that simply means that if we were putting it in our vernacular today, we would simply say that she was a black Gentile woman. And why did you bring that up, brother? I'm just trying to paint the picture. Sometimes what I wanna do is try to take you into that event and make you see what's going on. I want you to look at it and not only just look at it, but be involved in it. And so I want you to see the dynamics that are playing out here. 
And so this Gentile woman was a mother and she had a, a child, a, a daughter who was severely, the Bible says, demon possessed. In other words, listen to me carefully. Her daughter was in horrific condition. Her daughter was extremely vexed by a demonic spirit. I want you to hear me well, because when the Bible says she was severely demon possessed, when I looked at a low Nidal, a Greek English lexicon, the word means that she had a condition that was serious and that was dangerous. So her daughter had a demon in her that was so extreme that she was extremely vexed. And not only that, but it made her condition critical and it made her condition dangerous. She was a danger to herself. And not only was she a danger to herself, but she was a danger to others. And, and I, I, as I thought about that, I thought about all of those mothers that I know over the years that I have served in ministry, who have had to deal with children, who have gotten involved in drugs and become addicted to drugs. I want you to listen to me. Perhaps someone that I'm speaking to right now this morning, maybe you have a child or maybe you have a, even more than one child that, that strung out on drugs are caught up in alcoholism. They're not demon possessed. No, I don't believe in demon possession like it was in biblical times in Jesus' day. Jesus came and Jesus defeated the devil at Calvary. When Jesus died for our sins, they took him down from that cross. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early on the first day of the week, he rose from the grave never to die anymore. Jesus, yes, the Satan that snuffed that serpent struck his heel, but Jesus crushed his head because the Bible says that he triumphed over him. And I want you to understand that Satan, according to Revelation chapter 20, has been bound. Yes, he can do damage, but he cannot do the damage that he did prior to Jesus coming into this world to bring his reign of terror to an end. And so I'm not talking about demon possession, but I'm talking about something that the devil uses to enslave the minds and the bodies of so many. The devil is still wreaking havoc in the lives of many by the vices and devices that he has at his disposal. Right now in this present evil world, the devil is at work through the vices and the devices that he has at his disposal. And some of the devices of the devil are the scourge of drug addiction and the scourge of alcoholism. There are too many of our children addicted and I, how many is too many? One is too many. But there are too many of our children who are addicted to crack, some to powder cocaine, heroin, opioids and methamphetamines, alcohol, all of these things we have right now in this world, and it's not just in one race, it's across the human race. This is not a race issue, it's a humanity issue. Listen to me carefully, carefully this morning. If you're dealing with a child, if you're dealing with a spouse even, if you're dealing with siblings, if you're dealing, dealing with family members, you're caught up in that world of drug addiction. Sometimes you feel hopeless and sometimes you feel helpless. Just like this mother did here in Matthew chapter 15, she felt hopeless and she felt helpless. But in spite of her hopelessness and helplessness, when Jesus came to town, this woman saw an open door of opportunity to get the divine help that she needed all along. I don't know how she learned that Jesus was in town. Mark does not tell us. Matthew does not tell us. 
because that's not the issue. What is the issue? is that she learned that Jesus was in town and she understood that now is my opportunity. Now is my chance to get my child some help. The Lord is in town. I've heard about this Jesus and I couldn't get to him, but I thank you, Lord, that you have come to me. And so I want you to hear me well, mothers, fathers too. This woman went to Jesus and she entreated the Lord on behalf of her daughter. I encourage you to never give up on your child. Never give up on your loved ones. I know it's easy sometimes to wanna to say, I'm through with it, I'm throwing my hands up, I'm out of here, I'm through with it, I'm over with it, I will not deal with it any longer. Listen to me carefully. I'm not talking about being an enabler because some of us enable our children. We enable our loved ones. I'm not talking about that. But what I am talking about is never give up on taking our children, our loved ones to the throne of God in prayer, asking God to intervene, asking God to help this situation. I want you to understand that we ought to never stop petitioning God on behalf of our children, our family members, our loved ones, whomever it is. I don't care how hopeless it may appear. With God, there is always hope. When I think about even at East Side, you know that we have members there who have overcome addictions to drugs and alcohol. You understand that and you know that. So they are living examples that there is freedom in Christ and that God does have the power to liberate you, to emancipate you, to set you free from the enslaving power of these vices and devices of the devil. And so this woman came to Jesus pleading with him on behalf of her daughter. Listen to Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 23. Matthew 15 and verse 23. The Bible says, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him saying, send her away. But she cries out after us. Lord have mercy. The Bible says, watch this now. But he answered her not a word. But he answered her not a word. Church, listen to me, this is tough. This is difficult to hear. It's a bitter pill to swallow. She is pleading with Jesus to come and to heal her daughter. But in all of her pleading, Jesus never opened his mouth and uttered a single word to this woman. Jesus was completely silent. And sometimes, that is our experience as well. We pray and we pray and we pray and we pray and we pray for the Lord to do something in our lives, to change something in our lives, to fix a problem in our lives, to take away a problem in our lives. And yet heaven seems silent. What do we do when heaven is silent and unresponsive to our prayers. What do we do? Do we throw in a towel and call it quits? Do we surrender to our condition and say, oh, well, it's, I'm just defeated. Oh, well, I'll never be any better. Do we lose faith in God? Do we give up on prayer? Do we say, what's the use of praying? This praying stuff doesn't work anyway. Church, listen to me. The truth is that sometimes, sometimes we feel like doing all of the above. Sometimes we feel like, what's the use? Why pray? My condition seems to stay the same. It seems like heaven is silent. Jesus did not answer this woman. She said, Lord, Lord, will you come and help my child who's severely demon possessed? And Jesus didn't open his mouth and say a single word. 
Listen to me, church. Even when heaven seems silent, we must never give up on God. We must never stop praying. We must never stop pushing. Someone said, when you feel like giving up, you need to push. And that push is an acronym that means pray until something happens. This mother in Matthew 15 decided to push. She decided to pray until something happened. Look at this mother. Jesus is silent. And then right after that, the disciples come to Jesus and, and the disciples say to Jesus, Jesus, you need to get rid of this woman because she is an irritant. She is irritating us. Get rid of her, Lord, because she cries out after us. And that very cries out is in the present tense, which simply means that the woman wouldn't stop crying out. She just kept crying out and kept crying out and kept crying out and they couldn't shut her mouth up. They couldn't stop her from talking. They couldn't stop her from pleading. She said, I ain't going nowhere. I'm not leaving here. This is my only hope, my final hope. God, you are it. And she said, I'm not leaving. And to make matters worse, you need to understand that this conversation with the disciples and Jesus is not off in a corner somewhere. This woman is right there as they spoke, listening. She can hear the conversation. And again, listen to me, church. I'm just trying to tell you how life is sometimes. Watch this now. When life is hurting, you've been pleading to God and talking to heaven and asking God and heaven seems silent. And then all of a sudden, church members start talking about you. Church members start tearing you down. Church members start discouraging you. Church members start saying, why don't you give up on that boy? Why don't you give up on that girl? Why don't you do this and do that? Why don't you do get up and do something about your life? And they have all of the answers to your problems, but many times they can't fix their own problems. Listen to me carefully, church. It's easy to call the game from the bleachers. It's easy to play Monday morning quarterback. It's easy for people to tell you what you ought to do when they don't have your problem and they have never had your problem. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. When I'm hurting in life, I need to talk to someone who has walked in my shoes. I don't need to talk to someone who will say, I've never had a problem in life. I know they're lying if they say it. But listen to me. I don't want to talk to that person. I want to talk to someone. We can say, George, I've been where you are, man. And let me tell you how I got through it. Let me tell you how God brought me through it. That's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Paul says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is the Father who is full of mercy at all comfort he comforts us every time we have trouble so when others have trouble so when others have trouble so when others have trouble we can comfort them with the same comfort god gives to us you see god allows us to go through things in life so that we might be in a position to help others who will come behind us and walk in our same shoes this woman pleaded with Jesus and she did not hear a word from him. And what she heard was the disciples telling Jesus to send her away. Look, if you will, quickly at verse number 24. Verse number 24. The Bible says in verse 24, but he answered and said, I was not sent except to the out, lost, house, lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now Jesus is, is speaking here specifically to the disciples. In verse number 24, now to be fair with these men, it appears from reading the text that they said to Jesus, Lord, listen, 
You have the power to do something about this. Lord, listen, why don't you just give the woman what she's asking for and get rid of her? In other words, she's a problem. And Lord, you got the power to fix the problem so you can stop her from irritating and aggravating us. Now, they weren't interested in, in her problem. They were not interested in her pain. The only thing they were concerned about is she's a bother. And we don't feel like being bothered by this woman any longer. And watch this now. And when Jesus said something, it wasn't what, what that woman wanted to hear. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, I need to stop for a moment and try to walk you through this so that you don't get the wrong understanding of what Jesus is saying. Because if you read it wrong, you're going to have a wrong perception of who Jesus is. You need to understand when reading this text that Jesus is simply saying this, watch this, that his first line of duty, his first line of duty is to try to get the lost sheep. He's talking specifically about the Jews to get the lost sheep back in the sheep fold. In other words, he's using a, a shepherd metaphor. A shepherd now has his sheep in the sheepfold and some of them got out. His first line of responsibility is to go out and find those lost sheep and bring them back into the sheepfold. And so Jesus said, I got to deal with that first. I got to go get these lost sheep of the house of Israel and I need to bring them back to the sheepfold. And after I get the lost sheep back in the sheepfold, then I will reach out to the sheep, not in the fold, and bring them into the fold, and they will be one fold. But first, I got to get the ones that are already a part of the fold that have left the fold and get them back. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 10, verses 14 through 16. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep. Now watch this. He said, I have other sheep. He's talking about those Gentiles. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, not of this fold, not in the Israelite fold. They are Gentiles, not Jews. He says, I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. And that's exactly what Jesus is talking about in Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 24. He is saying, I'm not going to ne neglect the Gentiles. I have not lost sight of the Gentiles. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't forget about the Gentiles nor neglect them. Jesus said, no, sir, they are on my divine agenda. But listen, my order is simply this. Get the natural children by birth, the Jews, first. Get them back in step with God first. And then get the children to be adopted into the family of God, the Gentiles. And when I bring them together, they will be one equal par with one another, the natural children and the adopted children, because God will have one family and we're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And so that's the essence of what Jesus is saying. Don't misread that. Don't think that Jesus was being ugly and, and that he was being insensitive and being mean. He was merely saying, your time is coming. Just stay in line and wait for it. And I'll get to you. And Jesus is in essence saying to this woman, what you're asking me to do right now, you're asking me to let you cut in the line. You are asking me to let you skip the line and get in front of the natural children. Jesus said, I have an order. And that's all I'm doing. It wasn't a put down, it wasn't a rejection. It was merely a matter of him saying, you're on my plan, you're in my plan, just be patient. In verse 25, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 25, the Bible says, then she came and worshiped him saying, Lord, help this is a mother's love, church. 
this mother said, Lord, I'm not giving up. Lord, listen, you can tell me to wait my turn all you want to. The disciples can tell me to go away because I'm a nuisance, but I ain't going nowhere. Excuse my grandma. Excuse my grandma. This woman said, I'm not going anywhere, Lord, till you give me a blessing. She had that Jacob mentality. Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. In fact, instead of leaving you, Lord, instead of going away, instead of leaving from here, what I'm going to do is get closer to you now. I'm going to come before you and bow down and worship you. I'm not leaving. I'm coming now closer to you. And I'm going to bow down before you in reverence and homage and worship you. That's what that woman did, according to verse number 25. Church, listen to me. When life hurts, you need to do what this mother did. Don't pull away from God. Don't pull away from God. Draw nearer to God. The Bible says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Don't stop praying. Pray harder. Don't stop worshiping. Worship more intently. This mother is defying all the odds and overcoming every obstacle because she is determined to get the help that her daughter needs. That's her mother's unrelenting love. Her cry, according to verse 25, was simply, Lord, help me. Three simple words, Lord, help me. Church, it's almost like I can feel this woman's pain. It's almost like I can, I can feel that pain. I can feel her agony. This is a mother in agony, a mother in distress. She is pleading for her child. And sometimes, listen to me, that's really all we can say. Sometimes life hurts so much, we don't have many words in prayer. Sometimes all we can say is, Lord, have mercy. Sometimes all we can say is, Lord, help me. Lord, I don't know what else to say. I don't have any more words. Lord, help me is the cry of my heart. Lord, I just need your help. All of my pain, all of my frustrations, all of my disappointments, all of my bitterness, all of those things are encapsulated in that simple expression, Lord, help me. I know there have been times when all I could say is, Lord, you know. I can remember the times when life was hurting so deeply that all I could do was walk outside and look up to the heavens and see the stars and see that dark canopy and those lights dazzling in that dark canopy and know that there was a God above there and that that God is real. And sometimes I would just stand there in the driveway and look up and say, Lord, you know. And that was enough. Sometimes we don't have the words. The only thing we can say is, Lord, help me. Because you know what I'm going through. And mothers, that's the same prayer you need to be praying today as you seek to rear your children in this hostile world, this hateful world. Lord, help me ought to be your prayer. Lord, help me to rear my children in a cruel and mean and hateful world that seems to think that they have no value and that they're walking targets, Lord. No matter how they look, no matter how they walk, no matter how they dress, no matter how they talk, they are always less than and always under suspicion. Lord, help me. We need to pray. Lord, help me to rear my sons and my daughters to know you in a world 
that is hostile to you. In a world that keeps trying to tell them that there is no God, help me, dear Lord, to rear them to know you. Lord, help me to have patience and compassion, compassion when my child or my children make mistakes just like you have had patience with me and been compassionate toward me when I've made my mistakes. Lord, help me. Help me not to lose hope and give up on my children. Help me not to give up on my, my family, Lord. Help me not to give up on my marriage. Help me not to give up on myself. Lord, help me. What a prayer. What a prayer. The point is, never stop seeking the Lord's help. How are we getting close to the end? Let me quickly look at verse number 26. Verse number 26, Matthew 15, 26. The Bible says, but he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And I'm going to read the rest of it out. And she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the, their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very Lord, have mercy. Watch this now. It's about to get good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says, but he answered, Jesus answered and said to this woman now, to this woman, this Gentile woman, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Some translations just simply say, the dogs. When you first read that, if you're just reading it superficially, if you're just reading it on the surface, it seems like the ultimate insult. It seems that Jesus is adopting the expression that the typical Jew would, would use to, to, to debase and to dehumanize the Gentiles. It appears that Jesus is using that epithet that was mean and ugly and nasty and degrading, calling them dogs. But that's not what's going on here. The word that the Jews would use when speaking derogatorily of the Gentiles was kuon, meaning a street dog, a, a mangy dog, a scavenger, a dog that roamed the streets that no one would dare ever have in their house. But Jesus used a diminutive of that word. The word he used for dog in the text means a small house dog, a lap dog, a family dog, a pet, a little puppy. Now, what is that? What, what, why is that important? Because I want you to get the point. Jesus is not calling this woman a dog. He is simply using a common illustration to drive home the point about proper order. Here is the scenario. Here is the scenario. Jesus said, listen now, lady, here's the scenario. A family is sitting around the table eating their family meal. The mother is there, and the wife is there, and the children are there. Mom and dad and the children are all sitting there eating dinner. Jesus said, I don't think that you as a mother would take the bread on the table that's been prepared for the children and give it to the little puppies under the table without first feeding the children. Jesus said, I'm sure you wouldn't do that. That was simply a hypothetical illustration of something that would never happen because it would be inappropriate to feed the puppy and let the children go hungry. No responsible mother, no responsible parent would do such a thing. That's what Jesus is saying. He said, now listen, listen, I'm just trying to tell you, let me give you this illustration. Let me help you to understand what you're asking me. And the woman said, yes, Lord. In verse 27, Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. 
Then Jesus answered and said in verse 28 to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Lord have mercy. I wish, I wish, I wish I was at the church house now with the church gathered together. Listen, this mother said, Lord, let me tell you something. I hear what you're saying, Lord. I hear what you're saying. And Lord, you are absolutely right. I agree with you 100%. But I have an alternative take on your hypothetical illustration. Lord, if you don't mind, let me insert myself in this illustration. Lord, I don't mind playing the part of the little puppy dog, the little house pet. I don't mind playing that part in your illustration. So I'm doing it, Lord, not you, but I'm going to do it. Lord, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm not asking for the children's bread. I'm not asking for the children's bread, Lord. Uh, uh, listen, listen. The reason that the little puppies hang around the dinner table is not to get the bread, but to eat the crumbs that fall from the table as the children, as the children feast on the bread. Lord have mercy. So Lord, here it is, Lord. I'm not asking for the whole loaf. I'm not even asking for a piece of the loaf. And Lord, let me go a little further now. I'm not even, I'm not even asking for a pinch of the loaf. And Lord, let me go a little further. I'm not even asking for the crust from the loaf. Lord, what I'm really asking for is just a small, minuscule crumb that can barely be seen. Excuse me, Lord, <laughs> that's all I need and that's all I want because I know that there's enough power in your crumbs, Lord, to get the job done. And Lord, the children will never miss it because you got enough power in just a crumb that they'll never miss the crumb. And so Lord, I'm not asking for anything other than just a crumb of your power. Just a crumb will do. And Jesus said, oh woman, oh woman, oh woman, great is your faith. Go on home. <laughs> My power is already taken care of it. You're right, my crumb is enough. I don't need to even leave here. I don't need to stop my journey. I don't need to get off of my mission. All I gotta do is just give you the crumb that you're asking for. And I'm telling you right now, I've already done it. And your daughter has already been relieved of that demon. That spirit has been cast out of her. And I never moved from where I am because that's my crumb. Power enough to throw the devil out without even being where he is. Hallelujah. Praise his name. What a God we serve. But what is the message, church? What is the message? The message is simply this. Never give up on the Lord. Keep on pushing. Keep on praying. Keep on worshiping. Keep on calling on the Lord. Keep loving him. Keep trusting him. Keep depending on him. And I promise you that your day will come that the Lord will say, here's your crumb. And that crumb will be more than enough. But I thank God that we serve a God who gives us more than the crumbs. We serve a God who has invited us to come to the table as his children to dine sufficiently, not just on the crumbs, but on the whole loaf the Lord himself. I encourage you this morning, if you're not a Christian, to become a child of God, a member of the Lord's church. You do that by believing that Jesus came, suffered, bled, and died for your sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day. If you believe that Jesus did that, and he is the Christ, the Son of God, repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3 and 5, Acts 17, 30 and 31, confess the name of Jesus Christ, Acts 8, 36 and 38, and we will baptize you in water for the remission of your sins, according to Acts 2.38, Acts 22.16, 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21. You will be added to the Lord's body, his church. You will be saved by his amazing grace.
we encourage you to do it. I love you. Thank God for your listening here. Happy Mother's Day again. And we trust that you'll stay tuned for the rest of this worship service. Have a blessed and wonderful day.
Eastside family and friends. I'm Brother Russell Clemens here, and I'm here to lead us in our communion and in our giving. Before we get started with that, we want to thank Brother Williams for, for boldly proclaiming God's word in an uncompromising manner. We thank you, my brother, for such a strong word. We also want to let you know that before we dismiss today, we're going to have a very special announcement. So please stay on to the very end. Now for our communion. As Christians, because of Christ, we are now a part of a new covenant. We have a new relationship with Christ and we are now in fellowship with him. We do not need a high priest to intervene on our behalf. This new covenant was made possible by what Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross. And it was because of his love and obedience, sacrifice, that we've been redeemed from sin and we can answer to God with a clear conscience. What a mighty God we serve. Let us call, I would like to call to your attention, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 and following. The Bible says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when we had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At this time, let's remember. Remember Christ's body that was beaten. Remember the crown of thorns that were placed on his head. Remember the spear that was thrust in his side. As we eat of this bread, he said, do it in remembrance of me. Let's pray for the bread. Heavenly Father, we're striving to be obedient to you. We come together this Lord's Day to commune with you. We're about to partake of the bread, body of Christ, beaten by the hands of cruel man. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you that you fulfilled your promise dying on that cross. And Lord, as we're about to partake of this bread, we pray that our hearts will be open and in tune with you and with your word. And we could do so in a manner that's acceptable to you. But this is our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may partake of the bread. For the cup. He says in verse 25, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. We need to remember the water and the blood that flowed from his side. We should remember that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. We have to remember the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Drink it in remembrance of me. Let's pray for the cup. Heavenly Father, we come at this time as we continue to commune with you, we pray for the cup representing the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, he shed his life-giving blood so that we might have eternal life. Thank you for your undying, unending love and your willingness to go on Calvary's cross. May we, as we partake of this communion, Focus our hearts and our mind in remembrance of you and your blood that was shed at Calvary. This we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 
you may now partake of the cup. This will conclude the Lord's Supper. Now giving. Because of the pandemic and the, the way things are right now, we have three ways to give at Eastside. First, you can give online. You can go to our website, www.eastsidecoc.com, and you can give in that manner. You can use the Shelby app. Click on giving and follow the prompts. Or you can mail in your offering. Checks only, please, no cash. The mailing address should be on the screen. But you can mail it to Church of Christ at Eastside, P.O. Box 15595, Austin, Texas, 78761. For your consideration for the offering, we'll be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Verses 6 through 8. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or, or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have in, in an abundance for every good work. The principle of reaping and sowing is, is seen in everyday life. The farmer who sows much seed will have a better chance for a larger crop. The investor who puts a, a large sum of money in the bank will certainly collect more dividends. The more we invest in the work of the Lord, the more fruit will abound to our account. Whatever and whenever we attempted to forget this principle of sowing and reaping, we need to be remind ourselves, God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. God is a gracious and giving God. If we are to be godly and obedient, we must follow God's divine example. Our motives for giving must come from the heart to please God. We can't be sad givers. We can't be mad givers, but we can be glad givers. We cheerfully share what we have because we have experienced the bountiful grace of a generous God. With those in, words in mind, let us give. Let's pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we serve a loving giving God. And we're so grateful that you gave your begotten son freely for our hope of salvation. May we examine ourselves and strive to give back in some way, cheerfully and lovingly so we can further the kingdom of God on earth. We can give to be able to help those in need, to impact the community, to strengthen our ministries, to provide food and, and shelter and, and help for those who are in, in need. Thank you, Lord, for those who are giving, and may we strive to always pray that we can grow in our love as we try to strive to give for you. We know that these funds will be used in a great way, and we'll thank you. We we'll thank you for them. And it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. 
few announcements before we have our benediction, before we have our closing. Please remember to submit, if you have any prayer requests, please, please remember, submit those online and someone will contact you and get back with you and pray for you and pray with you. If you have a, another need, please remember that you can contact an elder or a deacon. Our contact information can be found in the church directory. Reach out and call someone this week. Offer them a, a word of encouragement. Let's be our brother and our sister's keepers. We want to once again wish all the mothers and mother figures happy Mother's Day. We appreciate those who were able to participate in the Mother's Day parade yesterday at the church building. And we're grateful for all those who took the time and effort and energy to put that together. We want to thank you for that. But wait. The celebration continues. We want to continue making this a very, very special day. As was mentioned earlier, the brothers have put together a very special Mother's Day presentation for our mothers and mother figures. This presentation will begin immediately following the closing prayer right here on this same platform. So please stay tuned. It is our prayer that everyone will enjoy this video presentation. That in mind, let's close out with the word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day that we've had, time we've had to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, Lord, for, for those who are sick and shut in, that you will give them a greater portion of health and strength. We pray that you will encourage those who've recently lost loved ones, that they can find peace through your spirit and through your word, and we can reach out and share a word of encouragement. We're grateful, Lord, for those who are worshiping with us who may not be members of the church, and we pray that something has been done and said that we all might have a greater understanding, a deeper understanding of your word. If there's anyone outside of Christ who wants to become a child of God, we pray that your spirit will move them to contact us and we will talk with them and, and reach out and we'll share the word. And I pray that they will become a child, a Christian, a child of God. Dismiss us with your blessing. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Stay tuned. Their presentation. God bless you. Hello to all our beautiful and loving mothers. Welcome to the Church of Christ at Eastside 2021 Mother's Day celebration, where we celebrate you. The man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. You should be known for the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of the gentle and quiet spirit which is so precious to God. She is clothed in strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. And these words that I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. Teach them to your children, and to their children after them. For you formed my inward parts, and you knitted me together in my mother's womb, I praise you. Sisters, we really hope that you enjoy the Mother's Day presentation today. Like all presentations, it did not go off without some glitches. We had one brother that wanted to be a part of this Mother's Day presentation by telling jokes. He indicated he thought it would really add value to the Mother's Day presentation. His first joke was all men should make coffee, and we asked him why, and he said there's a whole book in the Bible that says he brews. Well, you can thank us later for not allowing him to tell these type of jokes in the program. Then the last uh, glitch was Derwood Kirby showed up about a year early for the New Year In, Old Year Out program. 
And you must see this uh, glitch, and, and so we'll take you to this glitch now so you can see for yourself. 365 days a year is Mother's Day. We're here to honor our mothers. Hey, y'all! I'm back again. It's that time of year again, y'all. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on? What? what? Bro, it's that time. What you talking about? You're about seven months too early, girl. What you mean? You're in the red suit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's showtime, baby. New I saw year. you on TV doing New Year in, old year out. Right. That's where we at, right? This is a special Mother's Day presentation. Oh, man. What's going on? Have you called your mother today? What, 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 what were you saying? No, I ain't called her. Durwood, you've got three words to say. What's those? Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> You ain't got to leave, but you got to get out of here. Oh, man. That's cold. Oh, it was hot out here anyway. Velvet. <laughs> <laughs> we at the Eastside Church of Christ, the men rather have put together this excellent program for you. We formed a special committee. We call it FSBB, for the sisters by the brothers. This committee has come together to honor the mothers and we're happy to honor all the mothers today at the Church of Christ at East Side. We also from this special committee we put together a subcommittee just like the sisters do. We're learning from you by the way sisters. We put together a committee simply called FMBB for the mothers by the brothers. Sit back relax and enjoy yourself today while we go through this presentation or and production rather for the mothers. represent and every mother I know loves flowers and, and, and on Mother's Day we always had a red flower and if your mother deceased a white flower but to be in botanical gardens um, it's an honor and a pleasure for me and we're blessed to be here so let us all pray together our father who art in heaven hallowed be your holy and divine name we thank you for Jesus we thank you for Jesus we thank you for him given his life so he created the church and we thank you especially for the church of christ of east side we thank you for each and every mother thank you for each and every member and so we come on this special occasion saying happy mother's day thank you and to say that we love you and no man exists without a mother and we know love that it comes straight from our mothers so we asking god on this day to bless our mothers in a very, very special way. You've blessed them for us to be here, but we ask a special blessing on this day. So watch over us, guide and keep us, bless this film and this service and the brothers and the men's ministry. May we continue to come back together in love. May God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Happy Mother's Day. Welcome to the Mother's Day presentation. My name is Caleb Davis. Uh, we are here to uh, represent and award and achieve and affirm mothers. Uh, I want to start by just giving a short uh, monologue at, relative to our, our experiences with our mothers and even as men as well. Uh, so first, understand that motherhood is a journey, um, a lifetime journey with an undetermined destination and many important choices to make along the way. Uh, we thank our mothers for how much they've contributed to our lives and look forward to their long-lasting journey and legacy. Thank you, mothers. Mom, Big Mama, Noni, Nani, G-Mom, all the above, we call you these names. You help us to walk along the way. You are our extra hands that guides us along the way. We thank you for being a voice of inspiration for being our support, for showing us how to respect others, how to wash our hair, how to um, be the best that we could be in the world. You inspire us and whether here in person, here or near or in spirit, we want to honor you today. All the grandmothers, happy Mother's Day. Hi Eastside, I'm Bianca Shrinkfellow and I'm here to wish all of our beautiful and fabulous mother and mother figures Happy Mother's Day. One of the main thoughts that comes to my mind when I think of motherhood is 
from a greeting card I received actually from a fellow Eastside mother. And it read, a man's work is son to son, but a woman's work is never done. And this is so true, because even though we have some fantastic men that work very hard, moms work around the clock and into the night. When your child is up sick at night, who's normally there with them helping them get back to bed? It's normally mom. And it wasn't until I became a mom that I truly understood the sacrifice that mothers make for their kids. Growing up, my mom always made everything look so easy. She cooked, she cleaned, she helped us with our homework, and she never seemed to struggle. Now looking back, that is truly extraordinary because motherhood is challenging and it should be commended and celebrated. <laughs> Whether you stay home with the kids or you work outside of the house full-time or part-time, raising kids is literally like having 10 <laughs> full-time jobs. You know, you're a teacher, you're a janitor, you're a chef, you're a plumber, you're a project manager, and you don't get a break even when you're sick. It doesn't stop even when your kids grow up either. Just last week, my mom came over for one thing and ended up staying and helping us fix some items around the house. You know, but us moms, we wouldn't have it any other way. Being a mom is rewarding, it's a blessing. Our kids make us laugh, they make us smile, they bring us joy. So on that note, I want to wish all of our moms Happy Mother's Day. We love you. We appreciate you. You are our true superheroes. Force in my life, hey. There isn't anyone or anyone that I can be, and it just wouldn't feel right if I didn't have you by my side. You were there for me to love and care for me when the skies were gray. Whenever I was down, you were always there to come for me. And no one else could be what you have been to me. You will always be. You will always be the girl in my life for time. Mama, Mama, you know I love you. You know I love you, Mama. Mama, you're the queen of my heart. Your love is like tears from the stars. And Mama, I just want you to know loving you is like food for my soul. Hi, this is Mike and Leslie Williams. We want to say to all the mothers at Eastside, a happy Mother's Day. We pray that you're having a beautiful Mother's Day with your family, with your friends. Uh, we want you to know we love you. We miss you. Uh, we thank you for all that you do, the sacrifices that you make. Uh, and we just pray that this will be the best Mother's Day ever that you uh, will ever have. God bless you all and look forward to seeing you again. Hey Eastside, I'm Michelle. Uh, I just want to quickly say Happy Mother's Day to all the amazing mothers and aunties who have helped raise yours truly. I absolutely miss you, love you, thank you for everything you've given me um, to my amazing queen, my amazing mother, Evelyn Baker. Whew, thank you for everything that you've given me, um, the example you've always been, and the patience you've always had for me and Luther Baker. Thank you. Um, <laughs> God knew what I was getting into with y'all. So thank you so much. Um, and daddy, make sure you take mom somewhere nice today, all right? Thank you. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, mom. I hope you feel cherished on this day and always. I love you. Happy Mother's Day, mom. Love you from Northwest Campus. Happy Mother's Day, mom. I really hope you enjoy your day and that everything goes the way you want it to. Hey mom, it's Leo. Happy Mother's Day, all the way from Tampa, Florida. Me, 
Summer, Alexis, Libby, Isaiah, and Aaliyah. All wish you a happy Mother's Day. Love you very much. Wish we were there with you. Happy Mother's Day. Love you. Bye bye. Hi, Mom. I just wanted to wish you a happy Mother's Day. I hope that you have a fabulous day today. And I wanted to let you know that I love you and that you're always in my home. So I hope that you have a special, fantastic day. And can't wait to be back home with you. Dear Mom, I am very grateful to have a mother like you. All that I am is because of you. You have built me with your strength and with the moral and intellectual education you have given me. If you weren't my mom, I'd choose to have you as my friend or mentor. I love you and thank you. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, especially my mom for doing all that you do, taking care of everybody and being so selfless. Happy Mother's Day and please enjoy your day. Love you so much. Mom, I just want to thank you for putting up with a knucklehead like me. Please know that you are cherished and I love you so much. You are my example. You are my role model. You are my hero. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Mom, happy Mother's Day. If being a mom with a martial art, you get black belt. You get a Have a great day. Grandma's hand clapped in church on Sunday morning. Grandma's hands played a tambourine so well. Grandma's hands used to issue out a warning. She'd say, Billy, don't you run so fast. Might fall on a piece of glass. Might be snakes there in that grass. Grandma's hands. Grandma understands that you really love that band. Put yourself in Jesus' hands, Grandma's hands. You from the beautiful Botanica Gardens here in Austin, Texas, and to the mothers, we want to say Happy Mother's Day to you. From the brothers at the East Side Church of Christ. And from the children, we want you to know that we love you mothers. You're very special because in a very special way, God has given us a piece of himself in this world. There's nothing like a woman. Think about what a mother does. A mother carries life in her body and then she brings life through her body and then she's able to sustain life with her body. But God gave us mothers he gave us a piece of himself. And we want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. We love you. You're beautiful. And we pray that you'll have a wonderful Mother's Day today. God bless you and stay tuned for more to come. Oh my goodness, this is where it is. I knew it. I knew it. This is where the New Year's Eve program coordination team is, right? Wait, wait, wait. What? Do it. Wait. But this is not the New Year's Eve program. What you man, mean? This is preparation for Mother's Day weekend, man. Again? I told you that, man. Again? Yeah. Man, what is it with this Mother's Day thing, bro? I know man. you can help us, though. Let's oh, go. man. Oh, Let's man. Y'all must really think this thing is yeah, so you, special. Yeah, you look overdressed, too, man. <laughs> oh, man. What's up with that, man? Yeah, man. We you working hard. We like working hard. All right, all right. Good. Hey, what is it about this Mother's Day thing? Just look, let me know. Look, look. I can tell you this. Brother. 
George Williams started this mess. He got up one Sunday preaching, talking about we're going to do something special for the mothers next uh -huh. weekend. Okay. And then I thought it was a great idea. Okay. I didn't know what he was talking about. I said, Brother Williams, uh, what are we going to do? He said, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> and so that's how it got started about, about 2010, man. But we're busy. Why don't you go take off that uh, circus uh, ring leader suit? <laughs> hey, man, what's and, up and with that? So we can go home. <laughs> oh, man, I'm in, bro. Let's do this, y'all. Right, come on. Big Red. Let's uh, Hello. Oh, it's like that, And greetings to all the mothers and mother-like figures. We wanted to take a moment to talk about this year's gift. At the end of last year's presentation, we said to be continued. And unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we missed last year's program. So this year, we wanted to step up and make the gift memorable. So as part of the gift, we know that we're always going to have jewelry and a card. Now, I probably should have said that. so probably messed up future gifts, but the jewelry we know is well received and we've seen you wear it from time to time. So we hope you enjoy your gifts and that we've made you feel special and most importantly, we've made you feel loved. So happy Mother's Day and we pray that the rest of your day is wonderful. Gifts.